Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous fall day here in the drought plagued and the flood ravaged wasteland of South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Wednesday, November 13th, 2013. Amazingly, the grid has not gone down. <coughs> so, I can bring you on this beautiful, chilly fall day with absolutely gorgeous November day, I can bring you my weekly climate meltdown roundup rant <clears throat> where I go on the pages of the mainstream media right here at Yahoo News to bring you more evidence that this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire. And obviously, guys, the the overwhelming climate change news this week is that a typhoon over there in the Philippines that's, uh, whoa, looks kind of like my own backyard over there in the Philippines. And so I know what those guys are going through. Uh, so I could easily sit here and, and yak for 30 minutes about it, guys, but I will leave you to do most of your own uh, research on that uh, I think there's plenty out there on the mainstream media so I'm just uh, going to pick out a a couple to kick off my rant and then we will see where this romp around the planet takes us but let, let's start there in the Philippines from this article from the Christian Science Monitor Christian Science I just cannot help but love that name. So the reason that I love this uh, article is because it asked a question in the headline. <laughs> Just can't resist it. The question in this headline asked, will Typhoon Haiyan spur progress at UN climate talks? Guys, this is a no-brainer. The answer to the question is no. Typhoon Haiyan nor anything else will spur progress at UN climate talks. To put the words progress and UN climate talks together in the same sentence, even if that sentence is a question, is absurd. Okay, the subheadline. The unfolding tragedy in the Philippines may keep UN climate talks, the latest round of which began this week in Warsaw, from getting bogged down in national concerns. I, I, I have got to get my Gerald Salente bullshit, bullshit button here going. And... Uh, Anyway, and then, the, and then the first sentence of the article, the words UN climate talks can make the eyes of even the most optimistic environmentalists glaze over. And, and, if, you, and if, if, if the completely oxymoronic talk, uh, term UN climate talks progressive or not can make the eyes of the most optimistic environmentalist glaze over you can imagine what it does to any sort of doomsday prophet environmental alarmist with a brain but before I leave this one uh, let me just read the quote from, you've probably read this by now, from the Filipino envoy to these climate talks. This is Nadarev Yabsano. Quote, we can fix this. We can stop this madness right now, right here. Okay, good luck. Mr. Sano, who apparently is on a fast 
Uh, let's see, this man is fasting. Uh, quote, I will voluntarily refrain from eating food during this conference until a meaningful outcome is in sight. Close quote. The conference lasts until November 22nd. So I uh, hope Mr. Sano is a fat man because there will be zero progress uh, on any of these goddamn joke UN climate talks between now and November 22nd. And moving along, but I, I, I want to... Oh, shit, guys. I didn't bring my little idiot sheet. Uh, for what order? I have seven stories to touch on. Anyway, as long as we're talking about these, I, I, need, to, I need to make uh, one more mention of an article about these horseshit talks just to further explain why it is a no-brainer uh, the, the lack of progress in these UN climate talks has nothing to do with a typhoon in the Philippines. Nothing! Uh, what it does, uh, this is, uh, this is the article from Reuters News, just for, for anyone uh, who does not understand the, the absolute joke of these international climate agreements just needs to wade in to this one. Get your pitchfork uh, out before you do. Reuters News, global carbon market toolbox in sight at UN climate talks. And uh, this is a classic case uh, of intergovernmental gobbledygook, double speak, horse shit. Uh, talk about making your eyes glaze over. Okay, let's just read. Uh, let's see, I, I, I'm going to read one paragraph and then the last one. And, and I'm putting links to all of this shit. If you actually have any interest in these horse shit global climate talks, you can go on and read the story yourself. I'm going to read the first and then last paragraph. First paragraph, governments want to launch a platform. Oh boy, they are going, <laughs> launch a platform <coughs> at the UN climate talks to help set common standards and accounting rules and tie together national and regional emissions trading schemes, but developing countries and green groups warned that talks of a global carbon market is premature. There you go. Uh, I will let you decipher that sentence. And let me jump down to this long, in-depth uh, foray, foray into gobbledygook uh, about carbon markets. Okay, very last paragraph. Green groups, meaning environmental groups, including the Third World Network, have called the idea of these global carbon markets quote, a recipe for disaster, saying governments are pushing forward with building new markets before studying and learning from the failings of existing carbon markets. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, Let's see, what does the New York Times, how are they weighing in? Uh, as I say, I, I, I had this all ordered, but uh, I don't know what order these, the, these are going to come out. Let's, let's go over there. This is not from the New York Times environment page. This, is, this story is from the business page of the, um, of the New York Times 
uh, talking, uh, looking in at uh, this typhoon. The story, the headline on this story, the inequality of climate change, talking about typhoon, the high yon, blah, 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 has once again underscored for many development experts a cruel truth about climate change. It will hit the world's poorest the hardest. I think I was, uh, it might have been just last week, one week ago today, I was reading predictions that you are going to start seeing as climate change ramps up, you are going to start seeing more and more who is going to be taking it in the short and curlies. Obviously, the, the, the people who are going to take it, be getting hit the worst, are the po folks. Okay, this is, uh, this might have been the same, this is this World Bank report. It might have been the same one I was quoting a week uh, ago. Quote, no nation will be immune to the impacts of climate change. <clears throat> However, the distribution of impacts is likely to be inherently unequal and tilted against many of the world's poorest regions, which have the least economic, institutional, scientific, and technical capacity to cope and adapt. Close quote. That pretty much there, you're hearing it on the New York Times business page quoting the World Bank. Okay, and here's a quote from Rajendra Pachuri of the IPCC making his predictions. This is going back to 2007. What the IPCC was saying, uh, quote, it is the poorest of the poor in the world and this includes poor people even in prosperous societies who are going to be the worst hit. The reason is twofold. First, the geography of climate change itself, and generally, the farther from the equator, the wealthier the country, meaning rich countries like Norway and Canada uh, might see, I don't understand this sentence, it sounds like a typo, might see a disproportionate impact from global warming, meaning a, a lighter impact. Anyway, guys, this is a long uh, involved story breaking this down. How, guess who's going to get it? Let me see. Let me just go ahead and jump to the last paragraph as I like to do. Good Lord, this is a long... Uh, okay, this is the president of the World Bank, Jim Yong Kim. Quote, Poverty reduction and climate change are linked. We have powerful new evidence that even if climate change falls short of the much discussed four degree Celsius warmer world. No longer, I guess this man has thrown out this two degree horseshit. So he's already calling it the four degree uh, uh, Celsius warmer world. We could witness the rolling back of decades of development gains and force tens of millions of more people to live in poverty. If we don't confront climate change, we won't end poverty. Okay, and from those Yankees up there at New York and New York City, Let's go south. You know, I am a Georgia boy, so I have a special interest in this article from the state, which is South Carolina's homepage. I guess this covers the whole state of uh, South Carolina, and what this story is about is a new, the newest uh, climate change report 
looking at the southeastern United States, including my home state of Georgia. And uh, the title of this long, in-depth story is Climate Change Takes Aim at South. All right. Poisoned seafood, scorched forests, flooded homes, and crumbling bridges are just some of the problems the southeast can expect as the Earth's climate changes and temperatures heat up in future decades, according to a study released Tuesday. The 341-page report, based on the expertise of more than 100 scientists and researchers, is considered the most comprehensive study to date of how global warming is affecting the South and what Southerners can expect. The findings are worth paying attention to. Blah, blah, blah. Here's uh, Kristen Dow from University of South Carolina. Quote, there are going to be more people here to experience the impacts the climate models are projecting. Uh, by mid-century, most of South Carolina can expect more days above 90 degrees in the summer. Heat waves are projected to be more frequent. Uh, overall average temperatures in the south could rise up to nine degrees this century. Good Lord. Uh, this is, goes on and on. Uh, more wildfires, worn out roads, more devastating hurricanes, rising sea levels, toxic algae blooms, dying sea life but uh how they of course they had to get the quote from the honorable uh senator larry grooms republican senator larry grooms from south carolina was skeptical about uh the consequences for south carolina so this is what Larry Grooms has to say about a 341-page report put together by more than 100 climatologists. Quote, if you're talking about rising temperatures causing disease and famine and so forth, that is simply not the case. All you have to do is look to other states with a slightly warmer climate than South Carolina's. There is a reason why a lot of people move to Florida. Close quote. And there will be a lot of reasons that people will be moving out of Florida uh, as the over the next several decades as Florida goes under water. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, moving from, let's go to the opposite end of the country, from the southeast to the northwest, where we find this article from TakePart.com about how we are adapting to climate change. You know, when uh, the world gives you lemons, make lemonade. And the, the title of this one, When Life gives you beetle-killed forest, make biofuel. Okay, this optimistic article. I, I can't tell, I assume this guy is being a little bit sarcastic, but you can't ever tell anymore. <coughs> there has not been much upside to the rash of infestations of pine and spruce bark beetles in the forests of the Rocky Mountains. Since 1996, these pesky insects have chewed through 42 million acres of woods in the west, an area the size of Wisconsin. That destroys habitat and makes the forest susceptible to wildfire. So where is the silver lining in this? Okay, now 
a group of researchers from Colorado says it can process those beetle kill trees into biofuel that can be mixed with gasoline for use in combustion engines like those in most cars and trucks. And they quote uh, Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack, quote, a changing climate threatens to expand the threat from bark beetles on our forest lands. As we take steps to fight the, var the bark beetle, this innovative research will help take the biomass that results from bark beetle infestation and create clean, renewable energy that holds potential job creations and promises a clean future for America. All right, and you can go on the length to this uh, horse shit mainstream media story if you care to. I've heard enough myself. All right. What do I got? Two more of these, I believe. And now, I guess this is, we're going from the Rocky Mountains, I guess, just to the whole planet. Reuters News, 2013 is seventh hottest year and rising seas worsen typhoons. There you go. All right. This year is the seventh warmest since records began in 1850 and rising sea levels caused by climate change are aggravating the impact of storms such as Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. The World Meteorological Organization said on Wednesday this very morning more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere meant a warmer future and more extreme weather was inevitable. The WMO said the first nine months of the year tied with the same period of 2003 as the seventh warmest with average global land and ocean surface temperatures 0 0.86 degrees Fahrenheit above the 1961-1990 average. Quote, this year once again continues the underlying long-term trend towards higher temperatures caused by global warming that are causing more heat waves and downpours, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the WMO said 2013 is likely to end among the top 10 warmest years since records began in 1850. And then it goes on to talk about sea level rise is going, is clipping right along. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see, and they end with uh, the last sentence in this art, and they go about talking about uh, coal burning. The last sentence, <clears throat> Poland generates about 90% of its electricity from coal. Okay, guys, I'm probably running out of time, so I am going to end this uh, my climate change meltdown roundup rant with the very same story that I ended my economic meltdown roundup rant two days ago for uh, if you were not one of the five or six people on planet earth that uh, made it to the end of my economic meltdown roundup rant I'm just going to repeat it here. This is from right here directly from Yahoo News, the Daily Ticker. Headline, the cure to costly climate change is contraception. And, and so uh, I began my rant with, uh, with a uh, question, and I'm going to end it uh, answering a question. And guess what my answer to this question is? Is the cure 
to climate change contraception, meaning lowering the birth rate on this planet to reduce the number of consumers of fossil fuels? The answer to that question is yes. It is the only final solution to climate change and every single other environmental and hell uh, social and every other problem on this planet is to reduce the population of this planet by 90 percent but anyway uh, this is uh, an interview with uh, right here on the business page with my hero Alan Wiseman, author of the new book <clears throat> Countdown, Our Last Best Hope <coughs> for a Future on Earth. As I say, I have this on uh, order and I will be bringing it to you in future Sunday sermons. Until then, uh, I will repeat uh, this quote from, uh, from right here in the mainstream, in the business pages of the mainstream media. Alan Wiseman, quote, since we don't really have technology ready to completely replace fossil fuels, maybe what we have to do is start limiting the number of consumers of fossil fuels. We're pretty addicted to fossil fuels every one of us trying our best still is not going to be enough. Uh, and when it comes to the political and social obstacles of his solution, reducing the birth rate, Wiseman tells us, quote, it's probably easier than zero emission energy. We know how to use renewables, but don't know how to scale them up to the degree that we are demanding energy. And so the, the way to approach climate change and every other uh, supply and demand problem is on the demand side by reducing the demand on all of this shit by reducing the demand by, by the number of consumers by reducing the population of this planet and uh, they have a link to this interview with uh, my hero Alan Wiseman but I'll let you go on that to yourself for yourself and guys I was going to include uh, this article uh, in this in this rant about the great oil swindle but it deserves its own rant and I'm out of time on this and so I'm gonna come back at you one more in one more minute with my latest uh, why this doomsday prophet is on the fence about peak oil so any of you peak oil people pro or con I'm coming back at you in one minute with the great oil swindle for this rant, bye guys.